Hey booktube, it's Thea, and this is going to be my Spookathon TBR. So I apologize for the terrible lighting and poor quality of this video. Um, I've been feeling pretty slumpy lately. I haven't really wanted to do a lot of filming. I haven't honestly even been reading that much, um, but I did really want to get this up because Spookathon starts Monday, and Spookathon is always one of my favorite readathons. I always have so much fun, and I feel like it's the perfect, um, Thing. I think it's going to be the perfect thing to kind of get me out of my slump and put me in the Halloween spirit. I got my nails done and I did like a black and a white for Halloween. So I'm definitely in the mood for Halloween. I just like need to get, I need that push to get me over this slump. And I think the spookathon is going to be the perfect thing. Um, but I just didn't really want to go through the hassle. I just didn't really want to go through the whole like process of filming and um, it's been a busy day and it's, I have no natural lighting so I just decided to go for it um, with the terrible lighting and the poor quality I just put it up for you guys anyway um, but you don't care <laughs> about my rambling so without further ado let's go ahead and dive into my TBR I will show you guys I will tell you guys the challenges and what I plan on reading for those challenges always um, so challenge one is to read a thriller. I'm gonna go ahead and pick up What She Knew by Gilly McMillan. I don't know much about this. I do know that it's kind of like a domestic thriller. It follows um, our, it follows our main character, Rachel, and kind of the aftermath after her eight-year-old son goes missing. And it kind of gives me Gone Girl vibes where like the police are called and it becomes an open investigation and there's a search party and, um, friends and family start being questioned and then ultimately she becomes kind of suspicious um I don't know much more about it than that I don't really know what the ratings are like um, I haven't really seen a lot of people talk about it but I picked this up really cheap at a library book sale um quite a while ago and I've been wanting to branch out and read more thrillers and I think I hope this is something that'll be um, and I hoping, and I'm hoping that this is like a fast paced read that can kind of get me out of this slump. So I'm gonna try to go ahead and pick this up. And challenge two is to read a book with red on the cover. I'm gonna try to pick up You by Caroline Kepnes. There's quite a lot of red on this. Um, it has been featured on multiple TBRs. Um, I used to own a copy of it and then I got rid of it. And then I picked it up at my library book sale a few months ago. Um, and I've just been holding off on it because I knew I wanted to read it in October. I wanted to read it for Spookathon. Um, I think this is another thing that's gonna be really fast paced and hopefully get me out of my slump. Um, and I was always intrigued by the concept that takes place in second person um and it just seems like the perfect October read I've also haven't seen the like mini series um because I've been wanting to read this first so I'm really really hoping that I can finally get to it this year the challenge three is to read a book with a spooky word in the title and this one's always kind of up to interpretation as far as you know, different People find different words scary and spooky. I'm gonna to try to pick up These Witches Don't Burn by Isabel Sterling. Um, you could say that like burn is a spooky word, witches is definitely could be a spooky word. Um, and I just recently got this in my October Book of the Month Light A box. Um, and I have heard really good things about it. I've heard it's just a really fun, um, cute read, and it kind of seemed like it could be the perfect thing to get me out of my slump. Um, it's contemporary but it takes place in Salem which is you know very like fall atmospheric um features witches which is also kind of October and Halloweeny um and then it follows our main character Hannah she is a witch and things happen around her where she has to team up with her ex-girlfriend so already it's got like things that I love um but it just seemed like the perfect thing because it's got some it sounds like it's gonna have some like female female romance um it takes place in Salem which is like you know, screams fall and involves witches. So those were the only three things that I needed to get me sold on this novel. And I'm really, really hoping that I can get to it. It also is not very big. It's like 320 something pages and the font is really big. So I think that this will be a really fast paced read as well. Challenge four is to read a book with a spooky setting. This one is cheating a little bit because I'm actually gonna go ahead and pick up a few stories out of HP Lovecraft Great tales of horror um there are two stories in particular that i plan on reading one of them being the rats in the walls which is only like a 20 page short story and then the second one i'm kind of picking up is the shadows of over end's mouth which in's mouth is like the spooky abandoned like lakeside town um that involves like half 
fish, half human people, um, and it seemed kind of spooky. So I'm gonna pick up those two in particular, and then there's a couple other stories in here that I can go ahead and read. So this one's cheating a tiny little bit because I'm not reading a full novel, but I am gonna be picking up several stories in here and hopefully maybe reading like one a night um, or something similar. So I'm gonna try to pick up a couple stories from this as well. And challenge five is to read a book you wouldn't normally read. I'm gonna pick up Gerald's Game by Stephen King um, because Stephen King is not somebody I normally read as well as I don't read a lot of horror. Um, this has also been featured on a few TBRs and I've never managed to get to it, um, but I'm really hoping to get to it this week. It's also not very long. It's not as long as I was expecting it to be. It's only like 325 pages and the font's pretty big. So I definitely think it is doable to get to this week. I'm hoping that I, um, really like it. I have never read any Stephen King technically so um, I'm hoping that I can give this a read and really enjoy it. And I do have one other book because I always like to give myself more than I can handle in a week's time um, and that is Slayer by Kirsten White. I am currently reading this. I'm about 100 pages in or so um, and this could fit into a couple challenges kind of depending on how I'm feeling for the week. This could apply to a spooky setting. It could also apply to a spooky word in the title because you could say that Slayer is kind of spooky um, and if you want to cheat a tiny even little bit more it says from the world of Buffy the Vampire Slayer, you could say that vampire is a spooky word. Um, and so I'm gonna try to squeeze this in as well. So here is my TBR for Spookathon 2019. Let me know down in the comments below, are you guys participating? If you are, what are you reading? If you've read any of these, any thoughts, comments, and opinions about them. As always, if you like this video, give it a big thumbs up. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button to get notified of when I post new videos. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you're well, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.